All right, welcome back to Breakfast Television. Well, it's something a lot of people are interested in, and that is urban chicken, chicken cooping, Ch chicken farming. How would you describe it, Alex? Urban chicken coops. Urban chicken coops. Alice McLean is the founder of Buck Buck. I love the name. Buck Buck. There you go. Uh, you, listen, you did it in your video. Good it's to, fantastic. Uh, but Alex, uh, listen, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks a lot. Um, your 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 past. You you come from a background of beekeeping. Yeah, yeah. We started a company five years ago in, in uh, Montreal where we set up beehives on, on rooftops across the city. Uh -huh. So we do it for educational purposes and to produce uh, local honey. But it's part of that sort of movement to sort of bring nature, bring the country into the city, right? Yeah. The beekeeping. So I guess it sort of played out pretty nicely when you're thinking about other things to do in this city to try and bring this to Montreal. Yeah, exactly. We, we, the, the bees have been doing very well and, and uh, a lot of interest, uh, hundreds of schools, hundreds of companies. And we wanted to push that a little further and so that's why we decided to get into chickens. Uh, okay. And Let's talk about the urban chicken coop. Yes. Uh, so many questions about this. How much? <laughs> if I'm at home, let's say I have got you know, I live in St. Henry. Let's say I've yep. got a small backyard. I want to do this. What are the steps involved? So the first step, you have to buy the chicken coop from yeah. us. We're on an Indiegogo campaign at the moment mm -hmm. where we're selling it, and uh, you get the coop. You install it at your house. Uh, it's roughly a thousand dollars for the chicken coop. And then you get uh, your chickens that you pick up from a, a farmer uh -huh. and you start producing your own eggs. They produce an egg a day, right? So you can get two or three eggs every morning. From two or three eggs a day, that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly, because you have two or three chickens. Uh. Okay, now, uh, so, so immediately what, I, what comes to my <laughs> mind is, A, does it cause a ruckus? Are your neighbors going to be complaining? No. Uh, and that's the problem is, is if you do it uh, yourself, if you build your own chicken coop with old pallets and stuff, you get that issue. And that's why we designed this coop. So you know, there's no odors. Uh, it's soundproof. It's insulated for winter. So we thought of everything so that this chicken coop could uh, be perfect for the city and for city well. Is it, is it self is it self cleaning? How much maintenance do I got to do in this thing? It's not self cleaning, but the materials are used so that it's very easy to clean. You could power wash the whole thing. So uh, uh -huh. it takes about 10 minutes every day. So it's way less time than, you know, taking care of a dog or something like that. Now, have you done some testing with people that maybe were like sort of thinking about it, say, hey, what? why didn't you try it and see what the reaction was? Yeah, we set up 50 families last year, so, okay. so we wanted to see if it would work. Uh, so 50 families in and around Montreal that, that started with this coop, uh, and 48 of those families are actually continuing this year. So a very high success rate so far. What makes your design, your initiative, different from other things that have been tried? Well, there's actually no urban chicken coop out there. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's a very different. You, you, there's commercial chicken coops where you set up 20, 30 chickens, but you can't get a small chicken coop for the backyard that's aesthetic and that works for the city. So is the real, what's the real block here? Is it, is it municipal regulations? Do those need to change for this to happen? Municipal regulations are changing. Just uh, last year around Montreal, 15 municipalities changed the regulations. Mm -hmm. Toronto changed last month. Uh, so there's a big wind of change. Vancouver changed a few, a few years ago. No, I think it's just more uh, uh, thought and education needs to yeah. come because people don't don't really see the city yet as a place where you can produce food, but that's changing. How does that change your life? You, you put in the scoop, you've now got chickens. Uh, how do you think that changes someone's life? Well, one, I think you get connected a little bit more with your food. Yeah. Uh, a lot of families do it for the educational side of things. So, you know, it's not just, oh, I have fresh eggs, although the eggs are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it also, it's more the, the, the kids that have an activity that see how this is all produced and get a little bit more connected to our food system. From the time you set that up, the time you get the chicken, chicken goes in the coop, how, how long are you waiting before you get the eggs? They actually, it takes them two or three days to get adapted to uh -huh. the chicken coop. But after that, you know, an egg a day and two or three chickens and you're producing those fresh eggs. You were talking about the quality of the eggs. Can you, like, can you sort of d d compare it to the stuff you buy at the grocery store? How does it, how is it different? You, you can't compare it. Uh -huh. You can't compare it. No, no, it's really good. And I mean, chefs around the city go for these eggs. You know, everyone is after these eggs just because they're, they're much better. You know, the egg that comes in a grocery store has been through a whole process that's really transformed it. This is fresh from the... From uh -huh. From the chicken. Uh, the materials that you made, well, tell me about some of the choices you made in design to make sure this was the perfect decision, the perfect coop for the city. Well, it's also uh, built so that there's no predators that could get in. So there's mesh all around it, it's super solid. Uh, uh, it's made with these, this uh, advanced kind of foam, foam so it's going to be insulated for winter because you want to keep them all year round. Yeah. Uh, super easy to clean. It has all this integrated, you know, if people go on our Indiegogo campaign, they'll see, but really easy to add water and food because you want to make it as easy as possible because it's a new thing and people aren't used to it yet. Uh, the number one question that I had, and I know it's says there's some insulation, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But really, winter, Montreal, minus 25, these chickens are okay? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone asks yeah. the same question. But no, chickens yeah. produce a lot of body heat. You know, yeah. and, and so with their feathers, they're actually quite, uh, quite comfortable in the winter. Is there like a, a sort of... Uh, uh, number of chickens you'd recommend for this for your specific urban yeah like yeah no we, we say no more than three chickens so okay. the idea is not to do a commercial thing and, and start selling eggs at the market <laughs> i mean yeah. we're really not going that direction yeah. it's just for, for people to do it for their own family and to produce their own eggs this so. is for consumption for yourself personal for your family consumption, exactly, exactly uh where do you think this where do you think this is going to go where I, next 
I think, well, we're aiming now across Canada. We yeah. want to sell 300 of these uh, this year. Uh, but I think just as a broader idea, I think people are going to start producing more and more food. So, yes, there's eggs. There's been gardens forever. There's bees. But I think it's going to go another direction soon. Alex McLean, co-founder of Puck Puck. They're called Puck Puck. Search them everywhere. You will find them. A lot of people are going to be getting an urban chicken coop. Thanks, Alex. And we're in our campaign right now, which is in 20 days.